Well, the jungle that is the gaming industry has another casualty in Islands of Nine. But why exactly did this game fail? And why are we seeing other games fail regularly? Let's talk about this. Hey everybody, what's going on? Brandon here. I hope you guys are having an awesome holiday season. We're just a few short days away from Christmas, but unfortunately it looks like Define Human Studios, the creators of Islands of Nine, are not having such a jolly season this year. So yesterday, Define Human Studios released a statement saying they were going to be ceasing development on Islands of Nine. There was only going to be one more update uh, coming in the near future, and servers would stay up for the foreseeable future, but live development was going to end, and it was going to be free to play. They also did mention they were going to be trying to get refunds out to anybody who bought the game, and also people that bought things in the game. They were also going to be closing down the cash shop. Now this is actually really sad, but there's been a few contributing factors as to why this game didn't actually work and it's I've seen it time and time again and it's actually pretty simple I'm not understanding why developers aren't seeing this before they make these decisions uh, but it got me thinking when I read this yesterday that this was closing down and uh, going through and looking at some of the people's feedback on the game it's just it's sad but it made me say okay well maybe I should do another video about this I've done a video like it in the very past like I think my first video I actually covered this a little bit now, I've actually talked about this before. It was in my uh, first or my second video on this channel, and it was with Lawbreakers. It was before Lawbreakers was even public. It was I was in the closed alpha, and I was reviewing Lawbreakers and letting you guys know my thoughts on Lawbreakers. And in that video, I talked about it because uh, when I started playing the alpha of Lawbreakers, they were originally saying it was going to be free to play, and they changed their mind at the last minute, and they made it to where you had to pay to get into the game. That was suicide in today's market. I mean, that is just that's not a good idea to do with a game. Um, and that's what's happened with this. Uh, I can already see it happening with uh, the Hunt Showdown, and here's why. Now, when you have a game and you're releasing it on Steam, your player numbers are public knowledge. Um, anybody can see who, how many people are playing at any given point in time uh, through the Steam charts. So when you have a game you have to pay to get into, and then it's a multiplayer only game, so the only time you're going to be having fun is if you can get into a game and join a lobby. But you have to pay to get into this game. If you can see that nobody is playing the game, you in turn are not going to buy the game to jump in and play it, which makes, you know, nobody's in the lobbies because nobody wants to buy into a game with nobody in it. And that's how it is. That's why games in the, today's climate can't really afford to jump into a market that's already populated with other games, especially if there's free, you know, free models of those games. Like with, uh, Islands of Nine, yes, it went into development long before the Battle Royale craze was really big, but it released when the Battle Royale craze was big, and there were already a bunch of free-to-play options. Now, if you've got one game that looks really cool, and another game that doesn't look as cool, but it's free, and you can see that the game that you think looks really cool doesn't have anybody playing it, you're not going to be likely to spend money to play the game because you know you're going to be sitting in an empty lobby. So you're going to go to the free-to-play option. And unfortunately, that's what happens with games. When you, when you go with the multiplayer-only driven narrative with a PC game especially, and you can see that how many people are in the lobbies with the Steam charts, um, you're not going to be able to just make a hard sell to people to, uh, to play this game. And it's sad, but that's just that's the way it is. That's today's climate. Um, Darwin Project realized that really early. Um, they initially started with the whole, well, you got to pay in to buy the game, or you got to buy in to play the game. And they realized really early, nobody wanted to pay to jump into a game where they were going to be sitting and waiting in lobbies. So they went free to play. They turned their model around, went free to play, and now they're one of the most played games on Xbox. They're still around on PC. They got a cult following. It's not the biggest game, but I guarantee you they're making more money this way than they were beforehand. And they should have done that with Islands of Nine. Um, that's one of the sad things about this is because they didn't go with the free-to-play model where you could buy skins and stuff and that's what's going to funnel the game and funnel the development and uh, fund the server costs, then you are essentially shooting yourself in the foot because nobody wants to play a game if nobody's playing. Like even with this one, I have yet to be able to get into a lobby in Islands of Nine. Uh, I've never been able to get into a full game, ever. So uh, that's that's one huge downfall for this game is Nobody's ever playing it, and if nobody's ever playing it, then nobody's going to buy into the game, and that's what caused its failure, and I can already see it happening with Hunt Showdown. It's exactly what happened with Lawbreakers, and it keeps happening, and uh, I know people are going to say, well, they need money to, to fund the cost, but you know, you've got to be cost-effective with your development. 
Um, no, almost none of these people are paying for these games out of pocket. They're usually going through investors. When you go to your investors with your business plan, you need to be looking at the long term and you need to be looking at how you can make a return on that investment. And you need to plan for the long run. You need to be cost effective with your development. You need to make sure you have players first, then worry about money. And when you're building an online only multiplayer game, especially one where you need at least 50 players in a lobby in order to play the game, you need to make sure that you're going free to play in today's climate or you're not going to survive. That's just... That's the way the world works right now. You're not going to make it. I mean, even now, today's been the highest peak the Islands of Nine has had since uh, July. So, I mean, that it's pretty sad because the highest peak players that this game has had over the last, you know, couple, couple months was 750 players on at a time. But there's several different servers. So, I mean, that's not a whole lot. The average players have been around... 20 to 30 even in October getting as low as 8 but now because it went free to play last night it's at 92 had they done this sooner and left the cash shop open they would probably be easily making their money back to fund server costs and to fund development but yeah it is sad I've seen some really shady stuff happen when it comes to the gaming industry I don't think um, based on everything I'm seeing and I'm reading um, from the developers I really don't think they had any ill intent um, with this I don't think it was a scam I don't think they were just trying to make a quick cash grab and get money out of it I really do think they put a lot of time and energy into this game and really cared about it and its community unfortunately they just they did not handle their monetization model right they didn't handle their marketing right um, they just didn't handle a lot right early on and it's cost them now and it is sad I've seen a lot of people you know flaming them on Twitter calling them scammers and you know, getting mad at everything I've seen. I've seen they said they are trying to get refunds out to players if you request one. Um, they've already authorized Steam to refund anybody who's made any in-game purchases. Uh, they've already uh, got a hold of Xsola and I think one of their other partner networks to try to get refunds out through them. Um, so yeah, they. I don't think that they have any ill intent. I do think this is probably a really sad time uh, for them and their team. And it does suck because unlike Boss Key Productions, who I think was just kind of... Uh, you know, trying to make a cash grab with that radical heist real quick to run off with everybody's money, which I called in that video that I did. Um, I don't think this was actually something they're doing uh, with ill intent. And it kind of sucks because I'd like to see, with it being free to play and already in the last day getting a much higher peak player count, I would like to see it possibly reopen the cash shop to continue funding development on this game. Uh, I could see it possible. And, you know, it might be too late. They might not have been able to get this done fast enough to work now you can save it but uh, it just sucks because if they had done this a little bit sooner maybe a month earlier um, I guarantee they'd be seeing a, a bigger turnaround of player count and people actually paying for stuff in the game um, which sucks because you, you've got in this today's market you've got to uh, you've got to be cost effective you can't look at just making a good deal of money back early you've got to plan for the long run and hope you can make your money back later on down the road and yes it's risky but I mean look at it this way what the risk would have been worth it because now you're still shutting down and um, you got a bunch of angry players and now you went free to play and your game's getting higher player counts than it did uh, pretty much the whole time it was active so it's just you know, better decision making I'm hoping developers start learning from this and stop going this route and just understand you know yes it sounds enticing trying to make a good amount of money early on but uh, look at all the games right now that are that are out that you have to buy into that aren't free to play, but they're multiplayer only. None of them are really doing very good. Uh, you got a Death Garden, which I thought looked awesome. Uh, I played it once. I was going to do a review on it, but decided not to because I really just could not stand the game that bad. And I didn't want to crap all over it too bad. Uh, but even it, it's got, you know, it's online only. You got to pay into it and it has almost no players. Uh, the Hunt Showdown, almost no players, online only, and that's a really cool game. That that game has a lot going for it, but you have to buy into it. Um, what's another one? The new Dying Light uh, Brutal Royale game that they've got. You know, low player count because you got to buy into it. I mean, and it's happening with all of these multiplayer only games. Companies saying, okay, we'll buy into it or buy a Founders Pack to get into it now. We'll go free to play one day. And a lot of them don't go ever go free to play because uh, they end up shutting down too damn early. So. Hopefully a lot of developers learn from this and they try to uh, correct this going forward. Other developers see that, you know, in today's market, you need to be cost effective. You need to be getting investments that you can pay off in the long run. 
Uh, and it might be a little bit risky, but you, you know, if you want your game to succeed, you're going to have to make some risks. But I just wanted to get this out there and kind of discuss this with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more, please do me a favor and click that red subscribe button. Also, if you want to know anytime Nathan or I upload videos, please click that bell icon. But that's all the time I got for this one, guys. I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. I might not be on next week. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll see what me and my kids are doing, and we might, maybe we'll all do a stream on the Switch or something. Who knows? But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.